so this is uh, the introduction to uh, episode 30, I think we hit with, uh, with Janessa. I actually don't know your last name because it's just Janessa Art uh, <laughs> every, everywhere if you Google it. So um, Yeah, that name's Burks. Burks? Yeah. Janessa Burks. Well, thank you for joining us on episode 30 of An Untold Narrative. Um, you're welcome. What we like to do here is uh, highlight a lot of creatives from different industries, uh, whether that's footwear design, like my background and a lot of the people that I know, or unique artists or creatives, photographers, videographers, uh, or as, as you see behind you uh, for setting up these beautiful images, uh, canvas artists. So um, yeah, with that being said, talk about yourself a little bit, just like a brief, how would you introduce yourself? How would you in elevator pitch yourself? How would I elevator pitch myself? Oh God. So anyone that knows me knows I'm like a, a jack of all trades and a master of none. So this elevator pitch thing is always so tricky. Um, I would say that I am um, uh, a mom, an educator, an activist, and an artist. Um, and yeah, I, I find myself more and more finding ways to blend those things together, which is making me so happy because that's not something that I could envision uh, a few years ago. And now it's just kind of organically happening. And I'm very grateful. I, I think it's really interesting that you put artists last in that list of things. <laughs> I think I feel like that's how it went. It was like, I'm a mom. I am an educator. Now I have time to be an activist. And okay, I finally have time to be an artist. And it really wasn't something that I picked back up until a couple of years ago. I had put my paintbrushes down for 10 years. I didn't think I was going to paint again. I wasn't painting anywhere near this when I was younger. And I was so dedicated to just other things that I needed to focus on in life that I really had paid no attention to that artist voice in me for a long so time. We will uh, go through your timeline to, to kind of to present day and like the works you've been doing and the works behind you and things like that. But like talk about uh, where are you from? You know, what's your upbringing like? Were you always creative? Did you go to like a creative college or like what did you study, et cetera, et cetera. That's a loaded question. Yeah. I have questions, but. It's a free question. It's a free question. <laughs> um, so I was born in Worcester. I grew up for most of my life in Worcester, but there was a part of my childhood for like six, seven years where I lived in Hawaii. I lived on Maui. Hey. Um, which no is kidding. Why I said on one of your pictures. Hey. Um, it really is a heart home for me. And I, I think that my love of art really sparked while I was there because you're in this beautiful place where I mean, I remember walking by galleries all the time and being able to just, uh, I don't know, be in close proximity with art and have a great appreciation for art. Um, one of my mom's friends was an artist. So I remember like walking into his studio space and now he's a sculptor. But um, after that, when I came back here, I was just a nerdy kid that always had a notebook and like mechanical pencil. So you never had to sharpen it under my arm all the time. And that's, that's all I did. I was an only child that was just constantly drawing. Um, and I didn't even start painting until I was in high school. And in high school, I, I think I did my first painting, like real painting on a canvas board, not like some temper paint, finger paint thing. Um, I think I might've been 15, 16, something like that. And I hated it. I was like, painting is disgusting. It's awful. It's no control. My art teacher tried to help me fix something. I think I like tossed it across the room. I was like, it's ruined. Oh, this is garbage. <laughs> and I didn't even, I didn't even love it at first. Um, you were gravitating towards like draw, like pencil drawing. Yeah. I was just like a pencil sketch queen for a long time. <laughs> for a long time. Um, and it's easier, right? Like you're not mixing colors and like, you're not having to remix it after it dries. This is so much easier. You're black and white, the end, call it a day, finger smudging, Q-tip smudging. Like it is what it is. Give me a napkin, I'll draw on it, it's fine. Sure. Um, but I, I started to gain a love 
for painting in my junior year. And um, my senior year, I was talking to an admissions counselor from RISD and, you know, touring schools. And I was really set to go. I got an art teacher that wouldn't let me finish my portfolio. And the art teacher I had before her was very much like you can spend your extra periods here, whatever supplies you need to finish whatever it is that you need to make this portfolio. Mm -hmm. Kind of like I got your back and he was amazing. Um, he actually is still an art teacher, Mr. Harthan. Love that guy. Um, but I didn't really have any support once I didn't have him anymore. So I just, I switched gears and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do something completely different because everyone keeps saying I'm gonna be a starving artist if I go into this. And I became an elementary teacher and that's the route that I went instead because it was, it was guaranteed money. And you know, I, I happen to love kids and I love my job. Um, I did never think that I'd be able to do two at the same time. So, um, so are you an, are you an art teacher? No. Oh, you're just I'm a regular not. teacher. I'm just a fourth grade teacher. I teach all subjects during the no day. Kidding. And I bring art in and like on free time Friday, I'm like, what do you guys want to learn how to draw? What do you want to learn how to paint? And yeah, that's, that's it. I have, um, we have a great art teacher. So <laughs> that's amazing. I have um, a great art teacher friend. So, so you, after like, let's, so what, what years were you in Hawaii? Cause I think that's like an important part of life, right? Like, um, yeah, it was definitely a transformational years when I was younger. So like three to like nine, 10. Oh, okay. So do you remember years? You remember like the six through 10 or whatever? I, I don't know what, what kids remember. Like me as a child, I like all of my that. childhood memories, my fond childhood memories are from there. Oh, yeah. All those, all those like strong, strong memories that, yeah, they're from there. Um, and I don't remember as much when I came back. I, huh. I, like a, I don't know. But like I was in paradise. So I was in paradise, <laughs> surrounded by all this great stuff and great feelings and positive people. And then I came here and I was like, it's cold. I'm stuck in <laughs> What is this? <laughs> this is awful. So as, as <laughs> somebody kids are grouchy. What is happening? <laughs> As somebody who just went to Hawaii in December for the first time, I can vouch that it is amazing. The people are super positive. It is very beautiful weather. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, especially I think going from Hawaii to like, not to make fun of ourselves, but mass and be surrounded by a bunch of mass holes at a young age. It was like culture shock. I was like, ah, this is very, very different. So I, I don't have as many great memories in elementary or middle school here. Um, yeah. I have great memories after that though, so. You mean like in college? High school, yeah. My like junior, senior year and college. Got great memories, but gap it in between, it was a little, a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, and then where did you go to college to study becoming a teacher? I went to QCC and then I transferred to Worcester State I taught in um, the Worcester Public Schools for a few years and I kind of went, I feel like there's something that's missing. I feel like we are not, um, we don't have a really great equity lens in Worcester and it was really hard to be a part of and I, I didn't want to be a, I didn't want to be a compliant part of the problem. I wanted to be a part of the solution. So I went and got my master's at Harvard Ed. Really interesting. So I've, I've talked to a former teacher of Worcester public uh, schools and he says, he told me it was really tough. Like it's not an easy place to teach. It's not. And I, I would love to kind of add to the narrative that I feel like doesn't get spoken to enough. It's tough because sometimes the interactions that you have with students are tough. We've got kids that have just they're just going through more sometimes and that shows up naturally. That's a natural reaction for them. But um, the district itself just has so much work to do and I'm rooting for them. I am, hopefully I come back someday. Um, but we've got a lot of work to do around uh, racial equity 
And as a black person, it's hard to be a part of a district that has such a difficult time with racial equity. Yeah, I, 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 I've heard similar stories of, of it being super challenging. And I didn't grow up in Worcester. I moved here six years ago. So uh, I, I, they're, they're only like passive stories that people have told me, but you never know. I think there's the, the city's making a turn. We're living through some of its best years. Uh, and hopefully we can continue to make positive change. And because uh, the, the culture runs so deep here, like so deep. And like, it's a very it's, prideful city. As an outsider, it's wild. Like, I think it's so much better <laughs> very, than Very, very prideful city. It's so much better than Boston. Like, I don't know. Like, it's got so much going for it that, like, I think if you, it, I mean, this goes for like everywhere. Is like, if you figure out the education part of it, then like the future is going to become way brighter. So I'm with you there. Um, and then so you transitioned, you did that for a couple of years. And then where did you go? Three or four. Three or four years in the Worcester Public Schools and then the ed school. And while I was out in Cambridge, they scooped me up at a school that is just like, I mean, racial equity is at the core of this school, which is why I drive out there right now. Um, so you drive to Cambridge? I do. I do. <laughs> I do. Also, I for anybody made... listening, go check out the YouTube video so you can see my jaw drop. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I drive out there. Um, and actually, um, the most support initially came from my network out in Cambridge. They were like, you paint? What do you, why don't you do this more? I was like, I don't know, it's a hobby. No, no big deal. I had like one friend out here that was pushing and like, I'll pay you to do this. Um, but as for like spreading pictures of my art, initially it was my, my Cambridge, my Cambridge folks that were like, this is amazing do it more. And now, hands down, Worcester uh, community, my biggest supporters, they're the ones that are purchasing things and commissioning and partnering with me. And I, I love it. I did not think I would see this much art support in Worcester in my whole life. So this is incredible. That's super cool. Um, and then so how long have you been at the Cambridge uh, Ed, you said? I'm at a Cambridge elementary school. And this is my second year at the school that I'm at now. Oh, okay, cool. And it sounds like you love it there, and it's love it there. Do you? Do, it has, uh, and I know we're all over the map here, but like, has has COVID helped? Like, you, you're, are you teaching from home or no? So I just like to have lots of challenges in my life. So <laughs> my daughter is in an independent school out in Cambridge. Pre-COVID, okay. we signed up, and it is a school that I paid for her to go to. And um, then COVID hit and it was like, surprise. Um, she's in hybrid every other week and I'm remote. So I drive out for her and then teach from in my building every other week. Gotcha. So it kind of works. It kind of works. We're just getting up at five o'clock for my 12 year old to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> kind of working. <laughs> so I, uh, the, you're, I don't know if you, you might be our first guest who had, maybe not. No, you're definitely not our first guest who has children. Um, but like you mentioned having a 12 year old, right? Like how does, how has that influenced your life? Speak to that because I think a lot of, a lot of the listeners of this are, are fairly like youthful people. Maybe they don't have kids or but like, how has that influenced you as a, as a person, but then also a creative? Hmm. I think actually having her at, I had her at a young age, I was 19, having her really um, made me have to prioritize what I was doing. And that was part of the reason why the art got put to the side was I really did need to work really hard for her to have a better life and um, work really hard to make sure we had a stable home and that I was able to get through college while I was working with her. And that took a, a lot of time. I wouldn't change it at all. She's amazing. Um, but it did make it difficult. And still sometimes it makes it difficult when you meet creatives. I mean, you're a creative, so you know, we're just like free spirited bunches. And sometimes things are super last minute and it's just like, they're going crazy late at night. And I'm like, I'm having a great time. It's eight o'clock, I have to go home. Or like, oh, this sounds amazing. I'll be there once she's in bed. And it just like doesn't always, it doesn't always fit. 
the great thing though is I feel like the art community just doesn't care. They're so open and forgiving. They're like, yeah, you want to show up at eight o'clock at night, pre-COVID, show up at eight o'clock at night and join, join sure. us. Or, um, you know, do you want to Zoom call it from your house? And um, it's great. They welcome her everywhere too. So that's great. She just has almost zero desire to do anything with art, which yeah. everyone, yes. She's, it's just not in her, in her. Nope. <laughs> she started doing a little bit of digital art, but um, like my paintings are all over the walls in our house. Sure, so she, I, I bet. She'll go to paint like one thing and she's like, well, that's not, that's not what yours looks like. I'm like, oh. I pick on her all the time. I'm like, oh, you didn't learn how to paint like me in a day. You should quit everything. Come on. <laughs> and it just, it's not there right now. So where did you, where did you get your creative side from? Like, were your parents creative? Um, no, no, they don't really, nobody draws. My grandfather did, but I, he passed when I was really little. So I, I don't know, maybe I get my creativity from him. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's it's hard to say. I think it was just around places that were open to the arts and appreciative of the arts, which allowed me to engage in that. Yeah, um, I, I, I guess I'm similar in that sense. Like, I don't know who which side of my family was creative. Like, I just, I don't know. Because my, neither my parents really draw or anything like that. Um, but maybe it's just a blender, maybe it's the next generation down there. But um, you mentioned uh, giving up art for a long period of time, obviously juggling your daughter, juggling college, juggling getting a job, doing all these things, living a life, having trying to have a personal life, which who knows if you do or don't. No, I don't think I did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I did. <laughs> um, what, talk about uh, one, like, is the reason why you gave it up because of lack of time? And then two, like, how did you get back into it? Yeah, the reason I gave it up for sure was lack of time. Um, how I got back into it is, um, it's kind of funny. I used to paint on my walls. So- um, In your I, house? Yeah, I would like paint <laughs> little murals and stuff. And, <laughs> and I think for a long time, I didn't realize art was therapeutic. So I would do things like be pissed off and then go like, I'm gonna go paint and I would like, shut myself in a room and be like, nobody can come in here. I'm painting. <laughs> Paint on the walls. Um, wasn't, wasn't with it enough to make the connection to like, you could do that on a canvas, much smaller <laughs> in a therapeutic way too. <laughs> um, and, and then it clicked and I was like, oh yeah, I can paint on these canvases. And, and a friend saw a piece that I posted and said, you know, you painted this, like you do art. And I was like, yeah, when I'm, when I want to. When I'm frustrated. <laughs> yeah, when I'm frustrated, when I don't want anybody to talk to me, then I <laughs> paint and I say, leave me alone. <laughs> he said, this is what you do. And when I was going to go to the ed school, um, it's a 10 month master's program. They stop for no one and you can't work pretty much. So I knew I was going to have to quit my job for a year. And he was like, you're going to be broke. Like you paint, this is what you do, make money. And I initially said, nobody's gonna pay money for my paintings, you're crazy. And he went, I'll pay money for your paintings right now. And I was like, you will? You'll pay a little bit of money? Like, I'm gonna be broke. So I'm like, oh, oh okay, I'll, I'll paint something for a little bit of money, that's fine. Um, and he went on my Instagram, I used to be a hairdresser. He's like, do you even do hair anymore? And um, I said, no, and he's like, so he went through and he just ripped me. He was like, trash, trash, garbage, delete it, get rid of it put your art up here. And I was like, that's harsh. Yeah, okay, I guess, but nobody's gonna wanna buy my art. And then when I got to the ed school, people were just so amazed at some of the paintings that I did. They ended up putting me in a Black, Life, um, a Black History Month art show that was there, and it really just kind of took off. When and was this? This was, to, I graduated two years ago. So it was 2019? Like, yeah. Yeah. So it was that school. And year. that kick started you like getting back into painting? Yeah, the summer before that, the summer before I started school. So the summer of 2018, 
I just was like painting, 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 which helped because I was so scared. I was about to go to an Ivy League. And I was like, people like me don't go to schools like that. I'm so scared. So leave me alone and, and painted. Um, and yeah, and then it, that kick started and it just kept, it kept growing and it grew faster than I kind of knew what to do about. There's been a lot of learning independently, which is hard. And we, I think people don't realize how much work goes into it when you don't have a support system that is in your trade. So for me, I'm artistic and I now have art, like an art community, an art family, but I didn't then. So it was lots of researching and any creative knows, like you're learning from most from other people. It's like, who do you use to get your prints done? Cause I don't have money to get a whole bunch done and figure out which ones are good. Like, what do you do when you take pictures? How do you make your pictures look more professional? Cause I'm taking my pictures and they look like garbage. How do you trend on social media? Cause my, my art's good, but it's, it's not getting viewed or liked at all. So um, there was a lot of research that went in and now I'll say, I feel like I have a strong, um, a strong community in the arts field and um, that's working, but it was, it was, a little, it was a little tough to get. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I mean, even like the internet's such a beautiful place of like, it presents a lot of opportunities, but like, there's still like, you still have to put yourself out there and you still have to show the work and you still have to do the work in order for those opportunities to come back to you, right? So it's like people can complain about not having the resources or anything, but you still have to do the work in order for it to get come back to you. Yeah, one of the biggest helps for me was that I was a hairdresser and I had utilized social media to do really well in, in hairdressing. So you had a so lot of your clients. I kind of knew how to work it a little bit. and. Uh, <laughs> And then I helped a friend with their Latin dance company. And so I had fiddled more with him and like figured out some stuff. I was like, all right, some of this is transferable. Um, sure. And, and, and it worked because I'm, my business took off with Instagram. Like that's, that's how people found me. That's how I started getting clients. I still get commissions off social media, which is great because that's free. So Totally. Yeah. I mean, it's, and I'm the same way, right? Like it's, and now it's like uh, to an overwhelming extent, it's like not only Instagram, but it's like, I don't know if you do the TikTok, but I try to do the TikTok. I can't, I can't, I can't take on one more thing. It's, I do so cute videos. Don't get me wrong. I'll do a little transitions like, Hey, and now all of a sudden it's a beautiful piece of art. Yeah, I'll do that. But, um, it's a I'll, lot to that I then, like the TikTok if I download it. it now you know, now Clubhouse Clubhouse has an unbelievable art community, which is which sure. which you would love. Like all the groups that I'm part of, like you would really and you can ask all these artists come in and they ask those questions. Everything you rifled off like two minutes ago of like how where do I get my prints done? How do I take photographs? What do I do here? People just ask it in this open forum and they get answers from full-time artists who are super successful for free. Yeah, we we underestimate this whole like the networking and and what you're able to get out of it. I think I started doing well when I started realizing that you could just ask, right? I think there's this like invisible, I don't know, maybe it's not invisible, but uh, a logical fear that if we ask, I don't know, the sky's gonna fall and like <laughs> someone's gonna be so angry. I just started asking everybody. And I started asking, not on Clubhouse, because I'm not on there yet. I'm afraid my, my students will lose their teacher because I'll like forget to go to school. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's so much great information. Um, but yeah, I started messaging people on Instagram. And I was just like, your page is great. I love this piece. What paints do you use? And um, you don't always get a response, but a lot of the times you do and I get them now too and I respond to as many as I possibly can as mm -hmm. a little bit of an influx so sorry if I haven't responded to you I'm trying <laughs> um but yeah underestimating that you can do that and it's not just with arts if people are passionate about what they do a lot of the times they'll let you in it's not like everyone totally. hoarding these secrets and doesn't want you to do well some people yeah. are. <laughs> so 
talk about you know the past couple of years and really honing in on your artwork and and uh like how much how many hours a week do you spend on art because you're still a teacher so you still have a full-time job but like it's clearly part of you a very big part of you and from and i've only known you for a, let's call it a couple months or so since we were recently introduced to one another but like it's very visible it's like a very big part of your life absolutely um, it's a huge part of my life and I enjoy it. So I enjoy the teaching. Um, I don't think I feel as exhausted as other people do with it because I love my job. And then I love the art. It really does fulfill me. Um, I would rather paint than watch TV. I'd rather paint than like, I don't know any of the other things that people would like to do. Um, I'm sad that we're in this pandemic because of the negative things that are happening, but I'm not hating getting to be introverted and, and paint. Now I get to prioritize my art more and um, that's been great. So I really, I really just, I teach during the day and then I paint at night. I, I think I'm doing something related to my art every single day. So if it's apparent to others, it's because there's, I, every single day I'm doing something that has to do with art. And I think when you hear that, you, you imagine that someone's walking into their studio and painting every single day, but they're not thinking about all the other things that are going in, into it. So I am painting or I do limited edition um, replicas, canvas replicas, and every single canvas replica I embellish and hand paint on and then seal and I'm doing prints, so you're printing them and you're boxing them and you're mailing them out. And I'm doing commission works. I do multiple commission works a month. Um, so it's it's my own art. It's art for other people, and it's other things that artists do to just generate income, generate income to support our art habits. I feel like totally. Yeah. Um, and then there are other things like podcasts, like this or. Um, I do paint nights or I'll special guest for a youth group, but there's constantly something else that I'm doing with art. Wait, so I'm not your first podcast? You are my third podcast in the last week. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. They're great. In the last week? Yeah. That makes me feel like a pile of dog shit. No, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just no. kidding. One That's of them, was, amazing. One of them was with the art teacher at my school, and it was um, with other with other um, artists, and um, <laughs> uh, yeah. The, like that's that's truly amazing that is that's a, a testament to to you and your work ethic so like you mentioned like you love your job you paint because you love it you know it feeds you like this I usually don't ask this question until like the very end but I'm gonna ask it now like are you happy absolutely absolutely I am I am happier than I've ever been right now I mean you've seen I I've been smiling this entire time smiling and laughing wild having a great time Today alone, or in the last 48, we'll say a couple of days, someone sideswiped my car, my 2020, and tried to push me off the road. It's all messed up. I'm dealing with insurance. My hot water heater broke, flooded my basement, and was getting replaced today. Um, <laughs> I found, you know how we have a mouth problem in the winter? I found in my basement, in the flood, what I think was a rat. Um, and my daughter's hamster died. Oh, Jesus. Like, another person would be like, I'm going to cancel this thing right now. I cannot. And I'm, I painted before I got on here and I feel fine. <laughs> like, I'm fine. I'm fulfilled. Okay. It's such a therapy. Can we talk about wh what... What drives you to be so positive and optimistic and, you know, look at the bright side of things? Like, I don't know you. And I try, I, I consider myself a blind optimist and I'm definitely not like you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know. I, I've gotten that question a lot in the past few months too. Um, I think I just, I've been through a lot. So 
for me, it's really easy to look at the things that I do have instead of being stressed out about the things that I don't have because at one point I didn't have them. At one point I couldn't pay my rent. I was losing my house. I had a one-year-old um, who needed surgery and I had lost my job and it was just like bottom, bottom, bottom. Um, yeah, where you were like, I think I can afford to put my stuff in storage and I think I can afford to pay my car. Maybe someone will put us out in their house. And I carried around my daughter's playpen and back my trunk. And it was just like, hey, friend, can we sleep at your house tonight? And that's what it was. So for me now, I, I have a house. We're safe during this pandemic. If something does happen, I have a savings which didn't <laughs> exist at one point, like what was savings before? So I'm, I'm very fortunate. Um, and I do, um, I do have very positive people in my life. I think that was, the, that was the one choice that I made that has made it a lot easier to stay positive is um, if you're not a positive person and you, you take away my energy, I, I just don't deal with you. So we all have those people. And sometimes they're people in our own family. Sometimes yeah. they're friends that we've had for a very, very long time. I don't do it in a super negative way. I, I'm not the person that's, you know, pulling out the scissor and like, I'm never going to talk to you again. But um, I do distance myself from that. And I surround myself with people that are positive because energy is contagious. So if you're constantly around people that are like, woe is me and drama filled, then you can only feel so happy. But if you're surrounding yourself with positive people that are wishing you well and checking in on you and not in the way where it's, hey, how are you? But checking in on you and saying like, I'd love to see you. Do you have the space for it? I know you can make the time for it, but do you have the space for it? Um, or do you need that space for you time? Uh, being around people like that, it's hard to not be happy and positive. Um, and then I just, I, I worked really hard to have not one career that I love, but two. So I don't, I don't even feel like I have a right to be angry, like ever. <laughs> That's, people work really hard for that. People would kill for that. And I, I have them, so. I'm not crying or crying. Um, <laughs> this honestly, like that was, it's, it's very evident in the way that you speak, in the way that you enunciate, in the way that you present yourself that like you've clearly gone through the worst of the worst and you can survive anything and you should be super proud of yourself. And I'm proud of you. And like, I don't even know you. Oh, and thank you. Um, honestly, that like that, that's crazy. I'm not the only one that can do it. Um, and I, I think that you just need the right people in your life. You really do. I was lucky where I had a very, very small circle. I'm not even looking at the screen right now. Cause if I look at you, I'm going to cry. <laughs> for, for all our listeners on, on spotify or apple Podcasts, wherever you listen i am totally crying right <laughs> now. um yeah i have a very small group of friends but i have an incredibly strong group of friends that is so encouraging and if i didn't have them i i wouldn't have made it but i think that's that's really all you need you just need positive supportive people in your life that when you don't believe in yourself, remind you that you can do it. And, totally. and if you don't have that, you gotta go out and find it. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be family. My, my biggest supporters are, they're not my family. My biggest supporters have been my best friends since seventh grade. And I don't know, the, the college professor who, or um, yeah, the college, professor whose office I walked in and said, like, if you, if you can't figure out how to get me out of this school sooner than the three and a half years, they just told me I'm going to quit. And like, just was like, I don't see three and a half years. I see two. 
um, or got a scholarship and it was a mentor through a scholarship that just stayed connected with me and was like, I see something in you that you clearly don't see in yourself. It really doesn't, it doesn't take much to become a positive person in somebody else's life either. So if you have the space, you could do that too. That's, uh, I love that you said like a little bit earlier, like asking somebody if they have the space for them, like within you versus the time, because I, I, I agree with you, right? Anybody can make time for as much or as little as they want. I mean, that's, that's just time management, but like giving somebody yourself, like a true self versus like a, a frustrated self or a, and then give like having to block off something else or give up something else. Like that's just, it's different. It's totally different. I've never heard it say, said that way. I cannot take credit for it. It's a friend of mine that is um, in California and they went through my master's program before me. Love that guy. Um, he checked on, he sent me some motivation every single Monday so that I could get through my program. He knew I was going to have a hard time and like did FaceTime calls with me before I started. And he's the one that said like, you need to have the space for it. Like not the time, but the space. Cause we're both workaholics that need to learn how to use the word no. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, are, and are still working on it. It's going to be a lifetime. So set. I've like, I've talked to a lot of people recently about reaching the point where you're able to say no to work. Have you reached that point? Because people say like, that's where you want to live, where you've, your work speaks volumes and that people want it and that you can become selective more so like on the freelance side of things. Like a lot of people say that is like when you can, you're able to say no, that's like where you want to live. You do want to live there. I, I will say I, I hear that because then you're not feeling like you have to do things to to make money, you have the choice to do the things that you want to do instead of doing the things that you need to do. Um, and it's tough, right? As an artist, it, I get I get a lot of requests for things like memorial paintings. Those are very special. Or for, um, for healing pieces, whether it's like self-healing. And during those, I'll do an interview process where we talk about what is just, what is your journey? And from there, I pull out different aspects of it. And I say, this is what I'm envisioning as your healing piece and your self-empowerment piece. Um, I really enjoy doing those. So when somebody finally has the money or the courage to send me a message and say, I'd really like to get this piece done. And I have to say, no, because I just don't have the space to fit it in. It feels awful. So you, you do want to live there so that you don't have to deal with, I mean, we've just all dealt with those like awful people where you're like, I'm going to deal with you because I need the money, but I don't really want to deal with you at all. Yeah. You don't want to have to deal with them. Um, but I'm at a point where I don't have the, I don't have enough time to balance the things that I want to be able to do. Um, and they're all very meaningful to me, which sure. makes it difficult. So it's like a, it's a blessing and a curse. I don't feel like I have the right to complain because it's a really good place to be in and it doesn't always feel good. So do you envision yourself ever becoming a full-time artist or is that just, do you love the fact that you can balance these two, two, two or three worlds, the third world being your child and your family life, right? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely three worlds. Um, if any of my students, families, or uh, coworkers are listening, I'm going to stay with you forever. <laughs> 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 and I'm going to retire. It's going to be great. Um, but you never know. You never know. I will say that um, teaching in the public schools is, is draining for me. Um, as someone who is a big activist who cares very much about equity. And um, I don't think I can make it through. I don't think I can be a lifer. It just, it hurts to watch what's going on in the schools if you really care about kids. Um, 
it hurts to build connections with these families and these students and then have them either leave your classroom or leave your school and then get some of those horrible teachers that we've heard of, you know, and have and watch them regress and have a hard time. And it feels really helpless. After um, all the work that you just put in. After all the work you put in, it feels very helpless when you are, I don't know, when you're working with, like Cambridge is a strong district, it feels really powerless or, and, and awful when the teachers come together and we work together like a force. I mean, there are some powerhouses in the district and then policies get passed or rules are made that just, they're not what's best for the students and they're not what's best for us. In fact, you can tell they didn't listen to us at all then it's really hard to continue to put so much effort into that. And I'm not a person that could do it without putting all my effort into it either. Sure. So to say that I, I'll be able to continue it forever and retire, it's not likely. How long? I'm Who not knows? sure. I'm kind of just at a point where I'm like, I'm going where life takes me. And right now life is taking me in great places. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm riding it. it and I have never been able to do that before so it's a real good feeling that's that's really great that's amazing um do you mind if I ask how old you are yes I'm 32 I just turned 32 on the 16th oh happy birthday yeah oh okay awesome um yeah so you're gonna live another three lifetimes <laughs> yeah at least <laughs> I'm gonna do this again and again it's great that's amazing um Let's talk about your art a little bit, right? Like it's so powerful, it's super moving, it's it's real. Um, do you do all of your artworks have a meaning behind them? Are they all very special? Absolutely, yep, very much so. Um, so being an activist and caring very much about equity, um, especially racial equity. Um, I choose to paint stories of BIPOC, um, resilience, beauty, history, um, and every single one of my pieces stems from either a story, an individual, or a feeling that I had. So um, if you look up at this one with the two flags and the bars, the 13th, um, that was the first one that I was able to put a lot of emotion into. Um, and my life was impacted and um, not personally, but through a family member with m mass incarceration. Um, and I have other family members who were impacted by mass incarceration. Um, so that piece I actually had to take breaks from and you see the Pan-African flag is flying in the right direction. The American flag is flying in the wrong direction because I felt like we were moving in the wrong direction or not making the progress that we needed to. Um, it's a black man in prison and he's fighting through the bars because I feel like it's a, a fight to try to gain freedom if you're a black man and to go through the different systems that are set up against you from birth. He's still handcuffed. Um, because even if he manages to make it through those bars, there's still a fight to go and you're still bound. Um, there's fire in front of the bars because um, if we're talking about incarceration, even once you leave, there's still kind of a hell to walk through. There are a lot of things that happen afterwards. You lose rights, you lost time with your family, you become a different person when you've been in that type of isolation. Um, so, all my pieces have these like deep meanings for me. And a lot of the times there are very symbolic things within them that are open for interpretation from other people, but for me have a very specific one. Like even throwing the flag in with Amanda Gorman, I, that's I think the only other time I put a flag in a painting and I flew it in the right direction because I mean, first of all, she's amazing. And as she was speaking, as she was reading her poem, I was just crying 
And I don't cry in front of my daughter often, but I was like, it's just so much history being made today. It's so beautiful. And I just, just streaming. I think I stopped wiping them at one point. It was just like, <laughs> uh. um, and then when they panned back from her, there were flags. And for the first time in a long time, um, I saw a flag in a different light and I wasn't really, um, wasn't triggered by it, but I was proud of it. And I, I don't know another time in my life where I've seen the flag and felt proud of the direction we were going in. So for someone else, it's just like, of course she was there and there were flags. And for me, I'm like, no, it's so deep <laughs> for me. Um, so yeah, even this one, this one's my daughter. Oh. And um, I've got a little blurb about, about that um, uh, over the, past few years she really has started asking some really difficult questions and she's clearly got the heart of this activist and um her questions are centered around equity and what she notices in the world that's happening when it comes to the treatment of others or even the portrayal of others in the media um you can tell that it's really bothersome for her. And I don't always have answers to her questions. So I called that one fire in her eyes. Cause I said, I, I don't always know what she's thinking, but I know that there's a fire in her eyes and she's going to go off and do something. Um, she's, she's going to do more than me for sure. Um, so yeah, they all have these, like deep meanings in there, but um, yeah. That the, the the i mean I, I i i don't have kids but i would assume that the goal is that your child does more than you right like you set them up to do as uh, greater things absolutely so, um i think that's a really positive thing to even imagine that's going to happen right now while she's still in her oh yeah i'm screwed <laughs> <laughs> um but do you make these pieces to like these are really powerful pieces with the story like not only for yourself but other people but like is your intent to sell them or are you making these for yourself and yourself alone? And if they sell fantastic, or are they not for sale? Um, some of them are not, some okay. of them are not, some okay. of them, um, I'll put in shows, but I won't sell like the one of my daughter. I'm not, I won't sell. Totally. Um, yeah. The 13th one is, is a not for sale piece. Um, if I did them for healing for myself, they are not for sale. If, if I've done them, and I plan on entering them in shows like this one. I plan to enter into shows, then they won't be on sale for a period of time. Um, I started making them for just me and I didn't think anybody was going to want to buy them. Now um, people do. And I started doing um, limited edition prints. Sure. Um, so I do limited edition canvas prints um, or canvas replicas um limited edition paper prints and then um and then my earlier pieces are unlimited ones so i have lots of unlimited ones um that people can purchase and um earlier ones are for sale why lie i have to get better at just making that very easy to find and buy i'm becoming a web designer add it to you know the resume figuring it out as I go. So that's always a, a way that I end the conversation is like, do you have a website? I do have a website. Oh, okay. Um, so I have a website. It's JanessaArt.com. Um, you can find me with Janessa Art on Instagram, on Facebook. Please don't go to Twitter. It's a, it's a forgotten place <laughs> <laughs> that I do not visit. Um, I've got, you know, my email that people can reach out to me through either the website or it's tried to keep it simple for everybody. It's Janessart at Gmail. I mean, we started this conversation me not knowing your last name, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and honestly, that actually was intentional for a while because I'm Miss Burks and I didn't want any of the kids finding Miss B on social media. Yeah. <laughs> um, because I do have like, you know, like it's a, it's a boob out. Uh, she's breastfeeding or I have other ones where I went through I went through a, um, a consent period where I did like pieces where it was like 
ladies in lingerie. And I was like, this is not consent. And I teach fourth grade. So I didn't really want any of my kids to find me. Yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's, that's very smart and educated of you to like make that decision, right? Like not put your full name out there. Yeah. And my, my Facebook is not my name. So people, I've got a mix of people that call me by my nickname now because I changed it on Facebook. And they're like, I never know where to find you. Like, what is your actual name? Because my last name doesn't exist, but it's a nickname on one <laughs> and just Janessa on the other. I was recently uh, on Clubhouse. We were having this discussion of whether artists should go by like a, what, what do they call it? Like when you go by a different name. An ally, like an alias. An alias, thank you. Uh, or if you should just use your your real name as like for everything. And I, I... I don't know, just some, like my own personal perspective is like, you should use your full name because like, that's the name that you have. It's only you. So like, why would you go by something else? And like, I heard some really compelling arguments for like why you should use an alias or a different name. If I could go back, I would go by an alias. Right? If like, I could go back as a female, um, as a female, if I could go back, I would go by an alias. Um, I have had some very uncomfortable messages um in the past not because of the art but because of another job i've had people like try to follow me and now where things are so easy to find on social media i mean or on the internet to have your full name you just you really lose privacy in Oh, I tell people basically like if you, and I know even my Alexa is listening right now and Alexa turn off. Um, but <laughs> I tell people all the time, like if you ask me for my social, social security number, I'm better off giving it to you than you trying to find it because you're going to find it. <laughs> it's so scary. So if I can go back and then by the way, like I have social media, so I'm not taking pictures and posting me like straight out of bed with my hair up here. Like I've got <laughs> like... I don't know. I think people think that's what I look like all the time. And like, <laughs> I've, got some obsessed pe I've got some obsessed people on there. It's really weird. Uh, it's kind of creepy. So for a long time, I didn't even have that. I lived in mass on there. I was like, you don't even know where in the world I live. Like, I still get requests for things to do in like the UK and other places. I'm like, oh, I don't even live. Like, I live in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, if I could go back, I'd, have an alias but I think that's also like those are things that females have to think about more often sure. especially single females so um what what's next like talk about you know what do you do you let, let me I, I like to ask this question because I think COVID is the pure example of like don't have a five-year plan because COVID's gonna slap you in the fucking face <laughs> Talk about like, do you have future goals? Do you think that far ahead? Like what is, what's net, what are things that you're working on that you maybe don't talk about or like that you want to accomplish? I am such a planner. So I have <laughs> more plans in my brain than I probably will be able to foresee in my lifetime. <laughs> um, but one of, some of the things that are happening this year is in Worcester, I'm going to be linking up with some nonprofit organizations. I'll be doing some mural work. I'll be doing mural work where I get to bring in youth. So youth will come in and join me because anybody that knows me knows like adults are cool and all, but uh, I like kids. I like young people way better. And if I could just work with them and not any adults, I would. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and that'll be great. Um, we're doing some indoor murals, some outdoor murals. Um, I'm also experimenting with using different mediums now so that I can move from just canvas work to something that's a little bit more unique and I can have my own signature style. Everyone will have to stay tuned because I don't know if it's going to work yet, so I'm not going to tell you what it is and then have to admit I failed. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I was like, really like, do we have some breaking news here? Like, is this coming in hot right now? And why I lie, I keep putting aside time where I'm like, I'm going to dedicate, like this is vacation week for me. I'm a teacher. I was like, I'm going to dedicate this whole week to getting done these things that I want to do. And then, like you said, don't have a plan because like 
it's Thursday night and I don't, I haven't been able to spend one hour working on any of those things. So what if, what if you tell me, but I'll bleep it out of the podcast. Oh my God. Like, what's this meeting? Like, would you tell me if I bleeped it out? So up next, I'm going to be working with And there you go, right? <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> I didn't bleep anything out. She just didn't tell me. <laughs> uh, you could have just dropped your jaw though and pretended for a second. I gave you everything that you needed. All right, it's your own. It's your own thing. I get it. <laughs> we'll, well, we'll just have to stay tuned. That's it. Yeah. But I, would, I would assume that the side of a building during murals is a bit different than a campus. Yeah, absolutely. But like, I do big work. I mean, these are the things that fit on my couch behind me. But I mean, I have other pieces that are five feet tall. So it's do you like outside of art. Do you have any like personal like life goals? So I'll be honest, I did at one point. But sure. I came from like a, a family where no one was ever a homeowner. No one had graduated from college. Um, my mom was the only one on, on her side of the family for a while that had actually graduated from high school. So for me, it was like graduate from high school, graduate from college, buy a house, get your master's. And then I did like check, 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 check. And then I got to the point where I was like, I don't really, like what comes next? And somebody was like, a husband. And I went, hmm, <laughs> I don't care. I, um, what else that like takes effort <laughs> Because I, I don't know, that just kind of happens. It's not like you, I don't know. It's isn't not it, like isn't it crazy that like you check off all that, that bucket list from like your childhood and then you reach this point of like, okay, now what? Yeah, so I was at a what, what now point and I realized I just want to be happy. I just want to be happy. That's it. I want to find balance where I can do things for myself and be happy. And that seems so insignificant to some people, but if you're used to just like that nonstop grind, hustle, get it done mentality, and you're kind of one of the people that's a support system for others and a mentor for others, it's a really hard thing to do, to put aside time for you and give yourself permission to be happy, even though that's not what other people want you to do right now, that's actually really hard. So that, that's the only goal I have right now, that's it. I mean, that's the best goal to have, right? I think, <laughs> what, so last, I mean, we're, we're, we're approaching an hour of, of chatting, so thank you for your time. And I know you're obviously wicked busy. So what, like, how do you, one, how do you like separate that time for yourself? And like, what do you do for yourself? If you're willing to share. <laughs> I don't do anything for myself. <laughs> well, you talked about like, you know, separating that and like not, not going overboard with all these things that people expect you to do. I started learning to say no to commissions that I knew I couldn't get done quickly. Okay. Um, I mean, I think you, you got a little bit of it when I was like, actually, I just got run off the road. I don't, I don't think I can do this right now. Can we reschedule? Like that was, that's a big step for me to say, can we reschedule? Old me would have just like popped on here. Like, sorry, we might not have a great no, show you, right you, now. You, <laughs> you know? texted me that. I'm like, oh, please, please don't join. <laughs> so like that stuff like that, it seems small, but it, it's a big step for me to be able to say like, I actually need to reschedule this or, um, I took, I took a day off. I made it almost a year with no days off. And I finally was like, I'm actually really struggling. And I took a day off and my, my principal knows me so well. And my assistant principal knows me so well that they actually said, why don't you take tomorrow off too? So even saying like, okay, I'll do that is a step so it's still baby steps sure. um i don't know i'm gonna go watch good moms i never watch tv so like watching some i don't know outrageous comedy every once in a while but yeah other than that it's like a longer shower <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah it's just like and 
and, and I just say, I've resorted to just saying no in my own house. I, I, I bought a house that has an in-law apartment. So my mom's here. I have a 16 year old sister and it's my daughter. Um, so if I have put myself in another room and I hear a knock, I don't even say like what, I just say no. <laughs> and they like go away. So that that's. And they know. And they know. So I'll go, nope. And they're like, okay, I'll come back. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's a step. <laughs> so, very small bits of time. But that's, that's it. That's amazing. Um, well, thank you again for your time. I, uh, I, I know you're, you're, you're very busy and you deserve the time to yourself, let alone on some random person you haven't even met in, in real life's uh, podcast. But uh, I'm getting in the car and driving up to New Hampshire to drop off our kids after this. You're driving up to New Hampshire to drop off art right after this? Yeah. Is that a fact? Yeah. All right. So ju just for context, people listening, it's 7.41 p.m. on the Eastern Coast here and uh, at night. And uh, we're going to drive to New Hampshire after this, probably an hour there. And an and hour. I'm dropping off art kits to Phillips Exeter for uh, uh, an art paint night tomorrow. Jesus. But I love what I do. My drive is going to be some me time. I, that's that is I believe see I love that because like I I believe like long drives are me time for me like me speaking like that also like I, I I do love that so that's great that you're able to do that but that's that's I mean that's a very long night <laughs> every night is a long night but you love it but I love it but all I right love it. um thank you <laughs> <Thank, laughs> clearly have stuff to get to uh by the way uh why don't you tell people where they can primarily find you on your socials and, and just spell it out because i know your name's spelt a little bit differently than i even imagined it was okay so if you're looking to just peruse pictures you can find me on instagram with um the handle janessa j-e-n-n-e-s-s-a underscore art a-r-t if you're looking for my web page you can click on the link that's in the bio on my instagram or you can just go directly to janessaart.com which again is j-e-n-n-e-s-s-a-a-r-t.com beautiful i mean the, yeah you threw in an extra n and an s and and instead of an e i thought it was an a <laughs> in my phone like your number it's like it's all jacked up <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i did not get it right <laughs> um but anyway, thank you for being our, our 30th episode uh, and guest. And uh, I appreciate it. Hopefully uh, you have a great rest of the night. Um, Absolutely. I hope you have a wonderful night too. And it was, it was great talking to you. I hope we have many more conversations, whether it's on a podcast or not. <laughs> awesome. Thanks.